In today's video, we are going to be writing some code and specifically, we are going to be writing some scripts for Airtable automations that will allow us to update data inside of platforms like Webflow or MemberStack, even though they don't have their own native integration with Airtable automations, it's going to be a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's get into it. <music> Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Connor, and on this channel, I help people who cannot code build their own online businesses with no code tools like Webflow, Airtable, and Zapier. So, a while ago, I made a video on this channel basically stating that I believe that Airtable automations is the future of setting up workflows inside of no code tools. Airtable in itself is a phenomenal tool, but with the addition of automations, it's really allowed you to take workflows that you'd otherwise have to set up in tools like Zapier or Integromat and just do it directly inside of Airtable. Now, one of the bigger limitations that Airtable automation has at the moment is that it doesn't really have a lot of native integrations with some of the tools that I use in my day-to-day -day workflow. An example of that would be Webflow, MemberStack, MailerLite, MailerSend, and a whole bunch of other ones. But luckily, there is a way to actually send data to those platforms using scripts. Now, Aaron from Automate All The Thing was kind enough to sit down with me and talk me through the process of writing scripts, which at the time seemed like a bit of a big task considering I have no idea how to code. But after spending a little bit of time on it, I feel pretty good about where I'm heading with it. And I wanted to make this video today to show you what the individual steps are that are involved with writing these types of scripts. Now, I highly recommend that if you haven't already checked out Aaron's tutorial on how these scripts work, then just jump over to his channel. It is a four part series where he takes you through the very basics of writing your own scripts. It's fantastic and a really great place to get started. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a script that Aaron and I wrote together where we basically send data to MemberStack when a certain record is moved into a view inside of my Airtable base. Now obviously that is a very specific example but the main thing that I want you to take away from this video is that you can apply the principles that we use to send data to MemberStack to whatever platform that you are trying to send data to. Now also if you are just getting into writing scripts then seeing the actual script that we wrote might seem a little bit overwhelming at the beginning but if you are familiar with tools like Zapier or Integromat then I am convinced convinced that it is absolutely learnable. You might need to watch it a few times, but also if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll actually send you a link where you can actually download the code snippet that we wrote so that you can then copy and paste it into your own Airtable base and start making your own little modifications to the code without having to rewrite the entire thing from scratch. Okay, and then the last thing before we get into it is of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, I would very much appreciate if you could leave a like on this video, especially if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Other than that, stick around to the end because I will give you that link that will allow you to download the code snippet that I'm about to show you, but let's dive into the tutorial. So before we dive into writing a script inside of Airtable Automations, I actually just wanted to quickly show you what this particular workflow looks like inside of Zapier so that you can kind of see what we're doing when I start writing this script inside of Airtable. So it's a very simple two-step workflow. First of all, a person verifies their email address on the Unicorn Factory, and then what happens is that particular record gets moved into a view inside of Airtable, which is called the email verified view. And then from there, it triggers a workflow that updates this particular member with a new redirect link that basically sends them to a specific page depending on the membership type that they're on. So basically the way that that looks is they just click on confirm my email address and they then get moved into a special view called the email verified view. So I actually have a separate view set up for the actual workflows, but just for the sake of this tutorial, what happens is they get moved into this view here. And then from there, I basically go ahead and I update the particular record inside of MemberStack with a new redirect URL, which basically sends them to a specific page that allows them to take the next step. So setting this up inside of Zapier is pretty straightforward. Now, if you wanted to do this inside of Airtable automations, you would run into the issue that there's simply no member stack integration in there right now. But the way that you would solve this particular problem is just by writing a script. So I've made a few videos on this channel about 
Airtable automations, but I haven't made a video about what it looks like when you actually run a script as an action step. So if you wanted to go ahead and recreate it, the first step, um, which is defining the trigger event, is exactly the same as in Zapier. But what we want to do now is we want to actually write a script that basically mimics the step that we would otherwise use the member stack integration inside of Zapier for, so that we can then go and update a particular member stack user's reader URL. So one of the action steps inside of Airtable is to run a script and I'm going to talk you through the process now of how such a script is written. Now bear with me I am a pretty new to writing code and I am figuring a lot of it out as we go and I've also had a lot of help from Aaron who runs Automate All The Things. Again I'll link to his videos above so if you want to dive a bit deeper into writing these code snippets that you can then reuse inside of Airtable you'll be able to do that as well. So let's go through the individual steps. So the first thing that we're going to have to do if we want to send something to MemberStack is we're going to first of all have to define certain variables that allow us to basically separate the different members out from each other. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start off by defining a variable. Now you'll see every once in a while that it says let and then something like member or all members table and basically what we're doing here is we are defining a variable. So the way that you write it is you just go let member equal input.config and then on the left side you can start defining these input variables. So for my particular example I need two different input variables. First of all the I need an input variable for the Airtable ID for the record that moves into the view email verify inside of the member stack table. So that's what I've done here. I have defined this particular variable as record ID and then I have dynamically populated this variable with the information that I get from the first step when the event triggers. And then I also pull in the member ID which is a field inside of that record that triggers that contains the member stack ID of that particular user. So as soon as I have all of that done, what you can do is you can actually see whether or not your code works by just typing in console.log and then putting in the defined variable, which in our case is member, and then hitting the play button. And what you'll see is on the right side, you're gonna have this set of variables come up which contains the record ID of a particular freelancer as well as the member stack ID which is a field that is currently stored inside of that table. So basically what console log does is it gives you all of these variable here that you have asked for in the previous step so that you can kind of see if this particular stage of your workflow worked. All right let's jump back into Airtable scripts. So now that we know that we have got those variables that that we can later use in the um, next steps of the code. Now what we want to do is we want to pull in the member stack table. So this essentially is the equivalent of the trigger step that we have where we basically pull in the entire member stack table which contains all of the records and then what we want to do is we want to filter out the records by this particular Airtable ID. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to define the table that we're going to be working with. And the variable that I have given this particular step is the all members table. And that is equal to the member stack table inside of my ear table base. So it's base dot get table member stack. And then from there, what you can do is you can then define the individual records that sit inside of that table by again defining a variable, which in our case is now all members. And then what you do is you say, um, pull in the entire member stack table and again now we are using this variable that we defined in a previous step and from there you can use select records async to basically pull in all of the individual records that currently sit inside of that table. Now don't worry about the sort thing um, that is something that um, I was just experimenting with before. I'll skip this part for now just to keep things simple and we can move on to the next step. So, so far we have defined the input variables and we've pulled in the member stack table. Now 
basically where we are right now is we have this entire table with every single record that sits inside of my member stack table but obviously we don't need all of them we only want to filter out the ones that have recently been moved into that view that triggers the workflow so again we're going to kick things off by defining a variable which in our case is a member info and then what we're going to do is filter out that particular record so the way that it's filtered out is we reference the um, variable all members which again is all the individual records inside of the member stack table and then we go dot records dot filter which basically now allows us to say what we want to filter a particular record by so you you then just work with this here which is the parameter member uh, air table and then you basically want to filter it by the ID of that particular member air table and that is set to so the free equals basically means is equal to the members record ID as you recall in the first step when we defined the member we actually also defined the input variables that separate out that one member from everyone else and you can see here that the record ID that we defined as a variable is now being used to filter out that particular Airtable record from all the other ones and so now when again I put in the console log I'll be able to see what I get in return and you can see here that this is the input variable that I'm working with and it has this particular record ID and this particular member stack ID so again the two input variables that we defined in the first step now again I just want to remind you that the reason why we have these two variables is because we are going to be using them at a later stage and so the record ID has been used now and the member ID will be used later on when we send that information to member stack okay so now that we have filtered out this particular record now what we want to do is we now want to see what particular value sits inside of the redirect URL field for that particular user I just want to quickly explain what exactly I'm doing here I'm not going to go into too much detail because honestly this is a tutorial in itself but based on a specific membership type that someone is on they will get a unique redirect URL so if someone hasn't verified their email yet they'll have a different URL to someone who has verified their email address if they have sent through a freelance application again they'll have a different URL again and then later on when I um, when a user logs back in and they want to see what stage of the application they're in they can just click on this link here and it will take them back to the right stage that they're supposed to be at okay and so now let's jump back into the script so what I'm doing now is I'm basically saying tell me what the redirect URL is for this particular user who has that specific record ID from the first step and again when I console log it it will actually just tell me what that particular redirect URL is and if that is the right redirect URL we can now move on to the step where we send all of this information to member stack so I do have a little if statement in here which for the sake of this example we are going to ignore but basically what happens is it, go, it goes and checks if a specific redirect URL is currently set and if it is set so it does have something in there it does run the workflow where it sends the information to member stack otherwise the console log will just return that uh, the URL was empty and it didn't up update member stack but the more important part for this particular tutorial is this section here and so this is what we do when we send information to member stack so the way that it works is we again have to start off by defining our variable which is call to member stack and so once we have defined um, our variable we can now go ahead and type in the URL that we want to send the information to now I've made a video on this channel about how to read API documentations again essentially what you're doing here is you're sending information to the database that you're sending data to and the way that you define what record inside of that database that you want to update is by using these um, URLs here that you can find in the API documentation and the one that I'm using here is the member stack one and so I am sending this to a specific member and the way that I define who the member is is by adding this variable in the end here which is member.memberid and again that takes us right back to the first step where we define 
and our input variables. And the input variable that we are going to be using to figure out who the specific member is, is by using the member stack ID that we've got stored inside of Airtable. And that will then allow us to go ahead in the following steps and define what information we want to update for that particular user inside of member stack. So the information that we want to update is the continue application field, which basically contains the redirect URL. So I just have to go through this part here where I define the JSON and the custom fields. Again, if you haven't read through the um, API documentation for member stack, this won't make a lot of sense. But in short, what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and um, basically say to member stack what fields you want to populate. So what I'm working with here is I don't want to update all of my fields. I just want to update one particular field, which is the continue application field. And so again, all I need to do is just define it. I define the variable that I want to update and then I can set the actual value that I want to send there. And so as you can recall in the previous steps, we actually know that the variable that contains the redirect URL is member info dot get cell value and then redirect URL. And so now I can just write that in here as the input variable. And then as soon as this step runs, it will automatically send that redirect URL to member stack. And so then there are just a few little things left to do, uh, adding your headers into the API call. Again, I know that this sounds a bit intense, but again, this is definitely some of the more advanced stuff that you can do. But you just go ahead, define your content type, add your API key, and then as soon as you hit the test button, you should be able to see that a particular value has been updated inside of member stack. I can't test it right now because I don't have my API key in here because I obviously don't wanna have it on film. But in short, all of this should work. If errors come up, this will tell you what the error is. And then it's just a matter of Googling a lot. But that is pretty much how you can use scripts inside of Airtable automations to basically update uh, platforms that you might be using that currently don't have a native integration. And so that is it. That is how you can use Airtable scripts. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Now, if you want to use the exact code snippet that we use, then go and check out the comments down below. I will have left a link in the top or pinned comment. And so you'll be able to just jump over to my website and download that particular code snippet and start making your own little modifications to it. Now, I just want to again say thank you to Aaron for helping out with this. Again, if you haven't had a chance to check out his YouTube channel, I learned so much stuff from him you should definitely go and check it out other than that thank you so much for sticking around for the entire video and i'll see you back here for the next one